So I've been on this kick recently of trying to help creators and entrepreneurs, business owners identify their stories so that they can start telling their stories better in a way that engages an audience, drives and, and drives sales, drives growth, drives deeper interactions, d deeper connection with your audience. I think story is at the root cause, a root of all of this. And if we can identify in ourselves, what are those stories that are worth telling and then figure out how do we tell those in a compelling way that engages and educates and inspires? I think you can unlock the kingdom and, and infinite growth is at your, your, your business's fingertips. And so I was coaching a student this morning and um, it's very interesting how when you're when you're early on in the journey and of like figuring out what your stories are, like most everybody knows what their origin story is. Less likely though uh, is that they don't know what their conversion story is, which is like what is the story that you tell to get people to take the action that you want them to take. And it's not usually just some call to action, but it's usually something predicated on your something that happened to you that finally got you to get off the pot and take action, right? So that's your conversion story, but. One of the things I'm a big fan of is having your story Bible. I've done episodes on this in the past where you just write down all the different stories from your life, document all the big and little things that you have, you have ammunition that you can pull and use when you go on podcasts or when you're doing talking head videos or you're going and doing a YouTube video, whatever. Like you have content of which you can take different stories from your life, different experiences and build connection with your audience, build a bridge of connection that then drives them towards a desired action, right? And when I was working with this student this morning, it was really funny because we are so blind to our own stories because we're living it. You're living your life and the things that you just take for granted in what seems mundane and ordinary to you is most likely super weird, super compelling to somebody on the outside. Or it is very familiar to the, the avatar that you're trying to speak to. So for instance, myself, I have ADHD. This is something I've struggled with my entire life. And there's so many different aspects of ADHD that I just take for granted like my girlfriend likes to point out that I think I'm a time wizard, which means I always think I have enough time to get the thing done. I procrastinate, I put it off. And she's like, and when I tell her I'll be ready in 30 seconds, what I really mean is 30 minutes. And when she says, are you going to be ready to leave on time? And I'm like, yep, absolutely. And she's like, okay, just remember it takes 20 minutes to get there and we need to leave in five minutes to have 20 minutes in order to get there. And then I'll show up. And I'll be like, oh, we only need five minutes to get there because I'm a time wizard. I don't understand how time works, clearly. So there's aspects of that story that I could tell. And most people will go, I don't really get it. But to people who have ADHD, they're like, that resonates with me, right? And so I'm connecting a, a, a relationship with them. They're seeing themselves in me. And so then when I say, okay, well, here's what I do to kind of get around that. Here's how I work with my time wizard-ness. Um, and how's my, here's how my partner talks to me to help me see through the fact that I'm not actually a time wizard and helps keep me um, and us on time for things, right? Okay, so going back to my student, he was a door-to-door -door salesman for, for a long time. He started a business, did really well there, crushed it. And one of the things that people struggle with is like, okay, what am I going to talk about? I don't want my content on social media just to be salesy and and um, just like here's my thing and pitching, pitching, pitching. And as we were talking, I was like, I'm sure there's all these stories that you have from personal experience of going and knocking on doors that you, you take for granted now. But like, remember that one time you knocked on the door and the guy showed up naked holding a cat? And, and I'm like, I don't know if that ever happened to you, but I'm sure there was some weird stuff that you've encountered over the, the, the years of having knocked on thousands of doors and talked to thousands of strangers. And he kind of like smiled. He's like, yeah, that's true. Like I got a lot of those. I was like, those are incredibly compelling stories for a person like myself. If I, if I see, like, if you write it in a compelling way of like, I knocked on the door and then it opened, there was a 42 year old naked man holding a cat. And I was like, would you like to buy solar panels? Right. I would probably stop and read that story. Like what is happening here? Anyways, one of the things that you can do to combine um, that compelling hook, that story along with education though, is to tie these things together. And as I was talking with my student, he goes, he started telling me about how we got on the topic of like all the money that you could ever want is just on the other side of your neighbor's door, but you don't know which neighbor's door it is. So you just need to knock on thousands of neighbor's doors until you find that person. And that's really business in the nutshell is like, 
pitching more, taking more swings at bat, knocking on enough doors, sending enough cold emails, whatever, like putting out enough content. And one of the things that he was got, he started talking about was how when he would, you would, you would have a couple different classifications of, of people who think they can make it as a door to door salesman, which is a very incredibly difficult job. You have to be okay getting rejected a ton. A lot of people think they're okay getting rejected, but after like the 50th screw you get off my lawn, it gets old. And a lot of people go, I'm done with this. This isn't worth the effort. Other people, you know, they'll be comfortable knocking on doors. And this was his example. He's like, I know guys who are comfortable knocking on doors um, as long as there's not a sign that says do not solicit. But they see that sign and they immediately go, oh, no, I can't do that. And they get they go, uh, that'd be uncomfortable, right? He goes, e- whenever I see, and this is this is a fa- fabulous insight. He's like, whenever I see a do not solicit sign on a door, I don't take that as a no. I take that as them p- uh, playing defense because they know they're going to say, yes. And their only hope of not saying yes to my product is to put up a sign that says, please stay away because I can't be trusted to say no. So he's like, I go and knock on every door that says do not solicit. And he's like, guess what? My close rate with them is like 70%. It's way higher than like than average. And he's like, I think it's because they know like on a subconscious level that they are just prone to buying the thing. And he's like, starts telling me a story about how he knocked on the door this one time. This lady shows up and she's like, oh, no soliciting. And, she's, and he's like, oh, no, I'm not soliciting. God, I hate solicitors. She goes, oh, thank God. Me too. Next thing you know, she's buying the thing that he has to sell. Now, this is, there's obviously an art to this. It's It's not... Um, so straightforward is just going up, knocking on a door and be like, I'm not soliciting. And then by the way, here's my thing. Like there's nuance. And he's obviously a very skilled salesperson that he's able to do that in that environment. But there's, there's something there that in that story that educates, entertains, and it kind of surprises a little bit. And I was like, that's the type of content when you create that, it will stop people in their tracks. And I'm sure as you're listening to this right now, you have these stories that you just take for granted because it seems so duh to you, seems so obvious it, that it doesn't even, it doesn't bear mentioning because it just seems so obvious. But I, I promise you, to your audience, to the people that you're trying to connect to, it will either not seem obvious or it will seem familiar and comfortable. And in either case, it is a win. And this goes back to the thing that Gary Vee told us many years ago, which is document, don't create. And I'm sure you have tons of stories inside of you that if you just documented them uh, you and put them out there in a compelling way, if you knew how to tell those stories, then you would have all the business you could ever want in um, <laughs> you could, all the business you could you could ever handle. So this is one of the things why I'm so compassionate. I'm so passionate right now on storytelling. I've just seen it unlock a lot of growth right recently for my 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 students, and it's been really awesome to see. So. Um, hope this brings you guys a lot of value. If you want to learn how to become a better storyteller, what I call a seven figure storyteller, um, join the creative collective. This is something that we're going to launch in the next couple of weeks, depending on when this episode goes live. I don't know if it's out yet or not, but my goal is to help people learn like uh, uh, creators and entrepreneurs that are doing at least 5,000, if not $10,000 a month who want to triple that by the end of the year by learning how to tell better stories, when to tell those stories and how to tell those stories. So if that's interesting to you, um, Respond, leave a comment, um, say, I want to I want to get on the Creator Collective uh, wait list. We'll see if you're a good fit for it. And uh, hopefully, hopefully you are. And we can we can scale to the moon together. That'd be that'd be amazing. But um, it's a closed community. There's a lot of content. There's going to be one on one coaching. There's going to be group coaching with me. I'm sorry, not one on one coaching, but there's going to be group coaching with me so we can go through your story, help you refine it, tell it in a better way so that you can grow your businesses. So that is my goal for you. I hope you guys got some value out of this. As always, thank you for being here. I'll catch you guys around the bend here tomorrow. Don't miss it um, or do, but um, I'll miss you. Anyways, that'll do it for me, guys. Stay hyper focused, my friends.